How do you write a startup hypothesis? And how do you test it to see if your app idea is any good? Welcome everybody, my name is Dale Richards, CEO of App Creative. We're an app development company on the Silicon Slopes of Utah, and we love building software that changes the world. If you want to create apps, scale your technology, transform your business, and disrupt the market, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell. App ideas are kind of like sperm cells. There's a lot of them, and most of them don't make it. Failure to find product market fit is death. Destroying value by spending money building the wrong products is a serious problem. So how do we avoid building products based upon our assumptions and instead build products based on market feedback? We need to form a hypothesis and test it rapidly over and over to see if it fails. Now that might sound pessimistic, it's not. Forming a hypothesis that fails is success. Having said that, forming a hypothesis that withstands testing is what we're after. So let's do an overview of the steps to hypothesis testing, and then we'll dive deeper and give some examples in following videos. Step one is to create a hypothesis for your startup. The first step is to actually write the hypothesis statement. This statement outlines your assumptions about your target market, their problems, and your proposed solution to solve those problems. Your hypothesis should be grounded in research and data, not just guesswork. But a hypothesis is a guess. We have to guess at some things and then prove those guesses right or wrong using the market data. We're going to build a hypothesis using the Value Proposition Canvas by Strategizer. This is a great template for thinking through customer pains, gains, and jobs. From there, we'll come up with a monetizable pain statement and big idea hypothesis borrowed from Fur and Alstrom's book, Nail It Then Scale It. That will guide a lot of our communication as we reach out to potential users to conduct our research. Step two is to formulate discovery questions. Once you have your hypothesis, it's time to formulate discovery questions that will help you validate or invalidate your assumptions. These discovery questions are open-ended questions that you ask potential customers to gain insights into their needs and to their behaviors. These questions should be focused on the problems your target market is facing, their pain points, and how they currently solve those problems, including how much they spend. This should not be a set of hypothetical questions that fish for compliments or what we call false positives. And we're gonna take our direction from Rob Fitzpatrick's book, The Mom Test. Step three is to generate leads for potential users. So once we have our questions ready, the next step is to generate leads for potential users. You can, you can do this by leveraging your network. You can use social media, especially LinkedIn, depending upon your industry or your target markets industry. Um, gathering data from Google Maps, finding industry associations that may have directories available for you, or using other marketing channels. The key is to reach out to people who match your target market and are willing to spend some time talking to you about their problems. Quick pause, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, it really helps us out. Also, if you're interested in joining our Discord community where you can share ideas with a group, get feedback, and access premium features like live feedback sessions and workshops, go to appcreative.com slash MVP app, or click the link in the description below. That will take you over to our website where you can sign up for the waiting list. There is a waiting list for this group, so please be patient until a spot opens up for you. Okay, step four is to ask for the user's time to get their input. Once you have a list of potential users, it's time to reach out and ask for their time to get their input. Remember that you're not selling anything at this point, you're simply trying to understand their needs and problems better. So be respectful of their time and make it clear that their input is valuable to you. They are the subject matter expert and you are their humble servant. So you want them to see you as a potential pain reliever or game creator. You're going to make things happen for them. That's why they will be willing to take your meeting. Step five is to conduct the user interview. Ask your questions and listen. During this conversation, you need to ask questions, you need to listen carefully to their responses and ask follow-up questions. Be curious and open-minded. Uh, don't be afraid to ask difficult questions. The goal here is to gain a deep understanding of your target market's needs and validate or invalidate your assumptions. Again, you're not asking for hypotheticals, fishing for validation. You want to ask real questions about how they solve their problems now. Step six is to revisit your hypothesis and to validate or invalidate your assumptions. Be honest with yourself. Don't be afraid to pivot if needed. Remember, the goal is to build a successful startup, not to prove your initial assumptions right. 
What we want to do next is actually to do all of these steps together. So we're going to do this with the meat processing app idea we discovered. If you missed it, you can watch this video. Or if you're ready to start forming the hypothesis, watch this video.